Yo guys, what's up? It is Ripe again, back with episode 68 of our Reddit series. And I hope you're ready to get annoyed at some entitled people. Today we will have a longer episode, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And now, without any further ado, let's dive right in. I'm too skinny to be in public, apparently. A little backstory before I begin. I've had anorexia nervosa for over 4 years now. When I was 15, I decided that I was not good enough though I was perfectly thin. I would not take anyone's advice, eat little to nothing every day and wear baggy clothes to hide my skinny form. I did this for two years straight and as a result I was a 17 year old girl who weighed less than 80 pounds. I'm still in recovery after I quit my bulimic behaviors two years ago. Now onto the story. When I graduated from high school I got a writing scholarship which is great, considering I've always wanted to write novels. To celebrate, my best friend, who I had a crush on at the time, took me to an amusement park. He bought me an ice cream and we sat down at a table. Enter Entitled Woman. EW Can my daughter and I sit with you? These are the only available chairs. Friend Oh, of course. They sit down and pull out food out of their bag. I decide it's rude to just watch them, so I turn to my friend. We talk for a few minutes and I head to the bathroom. I do my business, wash my hands and fix some lip gloss that I had applied earlier that was smudged by some ice cream. When I leave the bathroom, I see my friend talking with the lady with an uncomfortable look on his face. I look at him and we lock eyes. He grinds his teeth, which is his way of saying, help me, this woman is literally making me want to die. I slowly walk to the table, trying to hear what this woman is saying. Entitled woman, is it your girlfriend? My friend shakes his head and tries to give her a polite smile. Entitled woman Well good, nobody should be that skinny and messed up. My eyes widen at this woman. My friend mouths Stay put at me and I freeze. Only a few feet away, still able to hear what she is saying. My friend opens his mouth to speak but she cuts him off. Entitled woman You would think that eating an entire ice cream cone would put some meat on her bones. This is my cue. I sit down next to my friend as if I had just come back and I hadn't heard a thing. The little girl looks at me, looks at my torso and even looks under the table to see my legs. It was a hot summer day so wearing baggy clothes would have been like torture for me. But I thought, God, if only I had my hoodie and long pants. Entitled girl, how did you get that small? Small wasn't the word, neither was how. The girl looked about 7 or 8 and you would think that someone her age would not ask such strange questions. I did not reply, I only gave her a slight smile and she looked up at her mom and whispered something in her ear. I turned to my friend and before either of us could speak, the EW steps in. EW Why don't you talk? The least you can do is answer her questions. Me? Well it's not really a topic I like talking about. EW Well, you can tell me anything, I'm a doctor. My brain, not a very good one. Me, I already have a doctor who is an expert on this stuff, so I'm choosing to keep that between me and her. Entitled woman, like, she's someone you trust? Me, yes. EW, she's a doctor, not a family member. You should not trust her. F, so what makes her think she should trust you? He grabs me by the hand and we leave. EW gives us a horrible stare as we walk. She can have that table. But she cannot have an excuse to force answers out of people who don't want to be questioned. Really, I will never understand how people have the audacity to try and get involved in other people's business like that. If you have watched until here, please don't forget to post some stars in the comments to let me know that you are a loyal ripe star. Where to park after surgery. Size heavily. I have been noticing a trend of the late. This is a scenario that I have witnessed a few times on the day I receive my infusions. About for the last few Fridays, I have witnessed a lady that has had a knee replacement surgery. I have told her that the clinic has complementary wheelchairs that is usable to the patients of the clinic while she is here. I noticed that she was struggling to walk on her crutches. Her husband was walking close, one would call it hovering, to make sure she did not trip and fall. After each time, I kindly suggest a wheelchair to help her get around the clinic. She kindly brushes the suggestion aside, saying that she is tired of sitting down all day. 
So each week for the past 3 weeks, I have been noticing this. With our appointments meshing around the same time of the day, so I have no way of knowing where her husband was parked. Well, until yesterday that is. I had to rush back to the clinic yesterday after my infusion appointment was over because I forgotten the doctor's notes for work stating that both my husband and I were there. I noticed the woman with the knee replacement surgery getting out of the vehicle where her husband parked in the handicap zone of the clinic. Even though she did not have the handicap license plates nor the card you place on the rear view mirror. I understood that she needed to park there. There was around 6 more spots empty in the handicap zone. In comes a person that was just an idiot. The person berated the husband for parking there. Entitled person because clearly he's not handicapped, because his vehicle had no identification on it, for the parking spot he's stolen. This person never noticed the wife that is clearly hurting. So I shamed the person that was trying to shame her husband. Me? So a person has to have a handicap sticker or card? To prove that they need these spots? If that is the case, what about the people that are getting their post-operation checkups? You know, the ones that are clearly using crutches because they are trying to walk. Also. You don't look handicapped. Where's your card or license plate to prove it? Entitled person. I have depression. Me. So having depression is more important to be able to use the handicap parking spots than someone that just had surgery? And how did you know it was knee replacement surgery? Entitled person. I didn't. Me. I'm not saying depression isn't important, but I'm saying if you have depression, you are able to use the normal parking spaces like everyone else. Titled person. But what? Me, stop trying to shame the husband and go see your doctor. Well by that point, the person was pissed at me and was ignoring the husband of the woman that just had knee replacement surgery. As you can see from the pictures I've recently posted, I just had post catheter surgery. So I embarrassed my husband for sticking up for someone else. I rushed inside to get the doctor's notes for the both of us. I had to get my blood pressure medicine, so husband drove me to CVS, the pharmacy. That is when a person who tried to shame the husband at the clinic tried to shame me inside the pharmacy. Entitled person So this is where you get your diabetic medicine? I look at this idiot and started to laugh in their face. Me Sorry to disappoint you. Yes, I know I am fat. I know I can stand to lose some weight. When you go through the stuff that I have went through medically, then you can make jokes about it. Until then, do some research about my disorder. That is when I showed her my reddit subreddit about all the pulmonary problems that people can have. Then the person looked ashamed but did not apologize at all. I am used to fat shaming, if I could lose my gut I would. I am losing weight on other parts of my body, but when you have three different types of surgeries on your abdomen, it is very hard to lose the gut. Let's continue to the next one. Entitled mom attempts to strangle me because I won't give her son my 3DS. Here is the cast. Me for me, EM entitled mom, and K nice kid, and dad. Here's some context. I have a birth defect called fibula hemimelia. This birth defect causes part or all of the fibula to be missing. This is the fibula for those who are curious. And apparently it's basically a leg bone. I'm missing the entire fibula in my right leg. This has caused some complications. For example, the birth defect causes length discrepancies in the affected leg. Basically, my right leg is shorter than my left one and because of this, I've had to get leg lengthenings, among other surgeries. As of now, I've had over 20 surgeries and I'm scheduled for another leg lengthening around late August slash early September. I've had to travel out of the state to see a specialist due to the fact that my old surgeon was kinda screwing up my ankle. My ankle is fine now, thanks to my specialist. This story takes place during one of my surgery trips. I was only 12 years old at the time, which was 5 years ago, but I still remember it vividly. Now for the story. So this took place when I was about 12 years old during a surgery trip. My dad and I had just entered the waiting room and my dad went up to the front desk to fill something out I guess. I didn't really care. I had brought my 3DS as well as a bag with a large portion of my games. As soon as I sat down, I pulled out Pokemon Omega Ruby, the 3DS remake of course, popped the game card in and started playing. 
Eventually, a young boy, who looked to be around my age, came over, sat next to me and started watching me play. After a particularly difficult battle, the kid spoke. And K, what are you playing? Me, Pokemon. Cool, can I try? Since the kid had asked nicely instead of just saying, let me try. I went to a place with some decent level Pokemon and let him battle for a bit. As he fought, I explained type advantages, disadvantages, and he actually got pretty good at battles. After about 6 or 7 battles, I asked for my 3DS back, which he did without complaining, which kind of surprised me. He then went back to his mom, who was actually sitting a few chairs behind me, and a few moments later I heard someone getting up. Q. E.M. E.M. began speaking to me somewhat quietly. At the time, I thought it was just so she would not disturb anyone, even though there wasn't really any other people there. I failed to notice that though, due to me focusing on my game. EM Hello Me being the timid kid I am, hi EM That was nice of you to let NK play your game. I just nodded. EM NK really liked your game, you should give it to him. Now, it's worth mentioning that my 3DS was a gift from my dad. He gave it to me while I was in recovery. I had spent about a year collecting games and I still have that 3DS and those games to this day. So upon hearing this, I turned off my 3DS, closed it and put it in my bag. Me, um, I'd rather not, it was a gift from my dad and EM cut me off. Oh god, you're so damn selfish, give me the game. Me, no, EM was visibly irritated and I guess she got tired of trying to make me give her the 3DS because she started trying to grab my bag. I really did not want to lose my 3DS, so using my left leg, my good leg, my left leg is just stronger, my right leg still works perfectly fine, it's just a little weaker. I tried pushing her away, which did not really work. She then screamed something, which sounded a bit like ripe but with an A, and ripped me out of my chair, pinned me against the ground and started choking me. A couple seconds later, my dad comes in and full on tackles her before getting on top of her grabbing her arm and pulling as hard as possible. It looked as though he was gonna rip her arm off. At this point, my dad loses it and starts yelling at her, though I don't really know what he said, considering I was huddled in a corner, freaking out over the fact that EM just tried to kill me. A couple minutes go by and the police arrive, ask some questions and then, I assume, went into a back room to look at the security footage. They came back and promptly arrested her. She was charged with attempted theft, assault of a minor and attempted murder, since she literally tried to choke me to death. Almost did, too. We ended up having to stay longer than intended, the first reason being my dad had to go to the trial. She was convicted, thank god, and was sent off to prison. The second reason we had to stay longer was because of that whole event. I wasn't really prepared mentally for the surgery. We rescheduled and when the time came for the surgery, it went off without a hitch. So luckily, there was a happy ending. I'm not dead and EM went to prison. NK was picked up by his dad and I can only assume that EM and NK's dad ended up getting divorced, if she's not still in prison that is. She can rot, in my opinion. Ripe Stars, what is your favorite mobile gaming device? I think the last handheld I had was a Game Boy Advance, so I did not really have the 3DS or anything like that, but I've tried it a couple of times and it's pretty fun. So tell us in the comments which one is your favorite. But now let's continue. EM tries to tell me I cannot nap. First off, I'm on mobile, so sorry for any problems. Second of all, this happened on Thursday, so backstory. My husband had rheumatoid arthritis, lupus and congestive heart failure. He was born with the CHF and the RA and lupus came into play after a bout with Mono when he was 16 and he's only 23 now. We live in a town that was devastated by Hurricane Michael back in October and the only two remaining rheumatology doctors don't take his insurance. The nearest doctor is two hours away and we can only do early morning shifts that way we don't get stuck in traffic and end up missing it. Also, that city is an hour ahead of us. And damn that's crazy honestly for an European that a city within the same country can be in a different time zone basically. We got up at 2am, showered, dressed and packed the cooler with snacks, drinks and a few sandwiches for lunch and left at 3.15am. 
His appointment was at 7 am their time. We made with an hour to spare, so we got breakfast before heading to the doctor's office. After he was called back, I went out to the car to take a nap, since I knew it was going to take some time, 30 minutes to an hour. Meet the cast. Me and EM are obvious. We will call my husband Liam and his mother who drove Jane. I get in the passenger seat, lay the seat back and put my feet on the dashboard. About 15 minutes later, I hear a pounding on the window. I open my eyes and I am greeted with by a Karen. Stereotypical everything except her voice, which sounded like she swapped voices with Peter Griffin while he had laryngitis or something. Her daughter was this cute little thing who said nothing. I rolled down my window to hear her better, keep in mind I was not very polite with her, I was tired and bitchy. Yes? You cannot do that, you know, EM stated. Do what? I asked. Sleep in a car like you're homeless. It's indecent and sets a bad example for my daughter, EM explained. Me, being very blunt, look lady, I've been up since 2am just so my husband could be here on time for his appointment. If I want to sleep in my car for while I wait for him, I will. EM, no one gets up at 2am for doctor's appointment. You're lying. I bet this car doesn't even belong to you. Me, we live in hometown, which was destroyed by the hurricane back in October. And you're right, this car does not belong to me, it belongs to my mother-in-law. So F off and leave me alone. I rolled up my window, put my headphones in, turned my music up and went back to sleep. She stayed there, ranting about me and who knows what else until Liam sent me a text saying they were heading out. I got up, fixed my seat, got out and locked the car. I walked past the EM and went to greet them. When they saw the EM, I gave them a quick rundown and Jane told us to stay back and she would handle it. We had no problem letting her deal with the EM. She could get rid of her quicker and easier than we could have. Jane, what is the problem ma'am? EM, that slut was sleeping in your car and was setting a bad example for my daughter. Jane, it's not her job to set an example for your daughter, that's your job. If she wants to take a nap in the car, let her. She's too old to be taking naps and it's only 8 o'clock. Jane, we have been up since 2 in the morning, we are all tired and you are never too old to nap. EM, only kids can take naps. People like her don't take naps, they work day and night turning tricks for any man willing to pay. Quick side note, my mother-in-law sees me as her own daughter. She has said so herself multiple times. Even though I married her son, she basically adopted me after I moved out of my own mother's house. On to the story, this is where it gets good. Jane took a deep breath as she stared daggers into the now smug EM's face. The EM was acting as if she had won. Nope. Jane balled her hand into a fist, pulled her arm back and decked the EM in the jaw. The EM fell to the ground holding her face which was now going to be ruined by a nice bruise for several days to come. Jane. Never insult my daughter like that again, or you will regret it even more than you do now. She looked over at us, come on kids, let's go to a museum. Yes, even though we are 23, she still calls us kids. As far as we can tell, the EM never called the police or got our license plate number. I think she just sulked away to lick her wounds and accept her defeat. I hope she learned a lesson. And if you ask me, that's a lesson every Karen should learn. And you know, now that even napping in the car is not allowed anymore, I think the next thing we are going to see is How dare you breathe in front of my son! Because Karen will always find a way to get upset and harass us. A group of entitled people try to get me arrested for being lost. First things first. I have no sense of direction and I am prone to getting lost. And the people in this are the entitled people, which there was like five, the cops and me. Well, this all started a few years ago and honestly, it is one of my funnier gotten lost stories. Well, I was traveling to go to visit my mother. She gave me directions, however, I'm super terrible at them. I, however, had gotten far enough to get to a light railway. My mother often described taking one to work. I was busy reading things as the EPs all walk up. I figured out my directions and go to the automatic ticket booth. I paid for my ticket and I stare at the machine trying to read this strange punch thing next to it. An older man said to me, loud enough for anyone to hear, 
You put your ticket in there for it to get a timestamp. If you don't, it's not valid and you can get in trouble during inspections. So I stamped the ticket like the man said. The train got there and everyone got on. I found a seat in the front corner as the group of EPs chose a bunch of seats in the back of the small carriage. They were loud as they blasted some rap music and were laughing. A few stops in and I was already lost and staring at the rail map near the door trying to make heads or tails out of it. That is when the cops came on. They announced it was an inspection and to get our tickets out. A cop comes over to me and notices that I had my ticket tucked slightly under my cap to hold it in place but to show off just in case. He speaks briefly to me and I tell him I am lost and I will be getting off at the next stop to figure out my way to my mother's. The other cop called the one talking to me over and the rap music stopped. I could hear some arguing but in truth I wasn't interested at this point. The next stop came, I got up and got off and headed straight to the map. I only paused as I heard some shouts and what sounded like a fight starting. The cops were ushering the EP group from before off the train. They were all shouting at the cops with slurs and what seemed to be stupid things. I thought I was not involved so I went to the map. Oh, how wrong I was. I was listening so that I can figure out if I had to move. The cops got them seated and informed them that they needed to buy tickets to ride the rail. That they could get off with a warning if they buy and stamp their tickets now. Why aren't you telling her that? She's with us! Snapped one EP. I looked over to them to see a guy pointing at me and the cop looked at me. She paid for her ticket and she isn't, I know, replied the cop calmly. Yes she is, arrest her! Cried a female EP pointing at me now. The cop sighed. She doesn't look like she's with you. If she's with you, where's she headed? Said the cop. He was right. Not only were we not seated together or talking to each other, I was wearing clothes with anime stuff on them while the EP group all have some band on their shirts. The whole group shouted something that sounded like the name of a band. The other cop, whom spoke to me before, said, She's not. Now buy your tickets. I turned my head back to the map as for the next five minutes the group of EPs kept saying I was with them and that I should be arrested. They also refused to pay for new tickets and I was getting annoyed hearing them so I got closer to the map and tried harder to ignore them. Until I heard it. Damn. The sound of someone getting punched. I looked over. The EP who was pointing at me first had just slugged one of the cops and was now being tackled by the other. I watched the scene as the cop who got punched ordered back up as he stood up to try to rein in the rest of the EPs whom were trying to fight him. Everything happened so fast but soon there was more cops and they came in, placed each of them EPs in handcuffs and took them away. I watched as they left as I could hear them shouting still Arrest her, she's with us! from the EPs as if they had practiced it. I just stood there dumbfounded, not even sure how to process what had happened. My mom appeared a few seconds later and it seems I got lost right at the stops she takes to get to work as she was returning. She commented on the cop cars and asked me if I knew what happened. I told her and she laughed. Only you would get someone arrested by saying and doing nothing, she said. I never saw those EPs again, thank god. And you know, I first thought, oh maybe that story kind of sounds fake. But then I actually remembered that a situation like that happened to me not even two months ago. There was a group of dodgy looking guys in the train sitting next to basically a grandma and the grandma of course purchased her ticket but the group of guys did not purchase anything. So when the train conductors came the group actually tried to say that they belong together with the old woman. If you have any crazy train stories please share them in the comments. So guys that was the last story for today. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did then feel free to leave a like and subscribe to support me and I would be very happy if you do. So I hope you have a great day and I see you tomorrow.